Hello everyone, welcome at Online Church with Shofar Sukunda. My name is Werner Rubert and I'm one of the pastors at this congregation and it is a privilege to have church with you this week online. I want to pray for us. Lord, I want to thank you for every person that's hearing this message and you will deeply bless them, enrich them, that you will grow them. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you as God with us, working in our hearts, our minds, with our energy, our ability to learn, hear your word, to digest it, and really take it into our lives. We submit to you, God, and we pray that you will work deeply with us today as we look into your word. In the name of Jesus, I pray. The question I want to ask today is, how do you build with hot stones? How do you build with hot stones? I want to read a scripture for us and then we'll, we'll take it from there. I'm reading for us from the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. As you come to him, speaking about Jesus, as you come to Jesus, and then the scripture describes a very important part of Jesus' life. A living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious. Precious. See that tension. Rejected by man, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. It describes what our purpose would be to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Very important the comparison that Scripture leads us to already embrace between us and Jesus. It says, as you come to Him, what you would see, expect it to be an image of what will happen in your life. As you come to Him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house. The last a month or so we've been talking about building this wall and that God is a God of purpose and that he wants us to build the wall of his kingdom in this town in our church and also God's busy with a building work in in your life and today I want you I hope that one of the goals of this sermon for me would be that you'll have courage to start building in your life even in those areas where it's not nice to go there to get the stones. Because those areas, those are areas that you'd like to forget about. These are areas in your life you don't want to talk about it, let alone going there to do repair work. But we need to set the expectation straight from the start. God wants your whole life. And the building work that He wants to do with you is so precious and so amazing. And it will last an eternity. But sometimes you will build with hot stones. Now what I mean by that is if, if an area for today of your life, an area that you don't want to go to, you don't want to talk about your relationship with your dad, you don't want to talk about when you grew up, you don't want to talk about this aspect of your life that you're struggling with because when you go there, it's almost like touching fire. It burns you in your heart. I would like to challenge you through this message to, to go to those places and say, okay, Lord, rejected by men, rejected by myself, hurt by men, uh, slandered by people. I wish I can erase that, but chosen and precious in the sight of God, I'm going there for renewal. That is my heart for you for today. Let's dig into this. Now, this might be an odd way to, to uh, an odd angle to press into a sermon that that I want to talk about God building you. I want to start actually a little bit with the doctrine of sin and hell, uh, which sounds very dooming, but, but please be on one page with me because understanding how the enemy wants to build in your life or destruct your life helps you tremendously in, in offering your heart to God and allowing Him to build. Knowing where you are coming from and knowing how destruction happened is very important. Now, I want to just throw a few thoughts around. We're not going very deep in the doctrine of sin or hell because we don't have time for that. But let me just drop a few thoughts with you. Um, 
One of the definitions for sins, which is really a good one to think about, is this. Taking a good thing and making it an ultimate thing. Okay, Taking something good and elevate it to idol status or status of worship. Taking a good thing and making it an ultimate thing. That can often lead you into sin and into destruction. Let me give you an example. If you take, for example, children. Scripture says that children is of the Lord. It is a blessing of God. Something as good as a child can be elevated in the heart of a mother or a father to be an ultimate thing. Let me give you an example. Let's say the enemy allows you, and that's this, it sounds counterintuitive, but follow me, to love your child more than God. Okay, To elevate your child to the place of ultimate in your life. Then when something happens, for example, at school and your child was wrong, they sinned, they made a mistake, let's say they lied or they stole something, then you would be tempted to also lie to make sure your child don't get into trouble. Because you see, the aim of your worship in that area has left, it's not God anymore, it's not pleasing God, it's elevating your child. And so something as simple as taking something good and making it ultimate can be very dangerous. Now you're teaching the child which you love, that there's times when you can turn against God, you can turn the truth. And now when they go on, it actually hurts them in their life. So your love for your child and then allowing sin to enter has been counterproductive. So have you really loved your child in the right way? Okay. Another example, for example, would be uh, elevating a person, which is a good thing, your, your marriage partner. Scripture says uh, a godly wife is a blessing of the Lord. Who can find a godly woman? She, that's amazing. The marriage is of God. God gave Adam and Eve to marriage. What can happen is that you can idolize or elevate your marriage partner as a good gift from God to being the ultimate thing in your life. What happens then is that you start to become suspicious when they talk to other people. You can become competitive for their attention. You can become needy. Um, and before you know it, you've got a relationship where there's tension. You see, it's never good to take something good and make it the ultimate thing. It's opening a door to sin. And for example, you can take resources, financial resources or any resources for that matter. Maybe you, you can think to yourself, hey, when I had little, I was so generous. I, I just gave, but the more I got, the more I started to place my identity and my resources. And, 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 and it is taken a part of your heart now when you look at other people you're either jealous and envious because you don't have as much or you look down at them because you have more and so taking good things and making it the ultimate things is a great way uh, to, to fall into sin now what I want to offer to you is that these are areas in our lives where the enemy starts a fire. Now, it's not a good fire like the fire of the Lord. It's, it's a destructive fire. Think of the fire of hell, all right? And what the enemy wants to do is he wants to put certain areas of your life or your life altogether on fire. And he wants it to burn. And what happens when something burns? It disintegrates and it falls away. Think of a nice log on the fire. It burns, it burns, it burns, and then it starts to fall apart. And I want us just to think one or two more examples around that. And then I want the Holy Spirit to help us, to encourage us to go into those areas that's burning and allow God, let us take the stones, even if it's hot there, and say, I'm taking it off. That's that area of that tension of even though rejected by man, but accepted by God. Like, even though in this area I failed, I was rejected by man, rejected by myself, did not make my own, my, they didn't cross the up bar, I said for myself, I'm, I'm going there, putting my hand in those fires and presenting those stones to God to build with. I, I want to give one or two more examples. So the first example I want to use is an example of, if I'm classifying this for the sake of telling stories, please don't, this is not, not you can't classify sin and rapid fires and slow fires, but just follow me in a sense of the story of, of, of this message. In one sense, we could say someone with a specific public drug addiction, there's a rapid fire of destruction burning there because you can see it so quickly. You can see the disintegration of the person. You see how this these sin fires of the enemy works, the opposite of building, is it breaks you down instead of building you up. If you take, for example, someone on drugs, 
they need more of the substance, okay, more money, more lies, often more isolation, feeling alone, for less of the satisfaction. Okay, and as you go for even more of the substance, more of the lies, more of the money, and less of the satisfaction, at one stage you crumble like a lock, you break. And in that moment, if there's people around you that loves you, you may end up in a place where you can do rehabilitation, you might die. You see a rapid disintegration of a person because that's the effects of sin. Now the problem is this. The problem is thinking that, yeah, that's for people on drugs. Well, that's for people with dangerous habits. Because what we need to watch out for is this. Let me, let me give you an example. A saying of C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis said this. We must remember that Christians never die. That's what he said. And so if there is bitterness in your life that's growing, it's not as rapid, visib visible as someone on drugs. If there's, if there's bitterness in your life and you get a little bit more bitter every 10 years, maybe you can see, oh, you know what, my grandpa, there's quite a lot of bitterness there. Um, or, or anger, again, okay, it builds slowly over 70 years. You can see it, wow, it's quite a bitter person. How would that look like in a million years? What is the destruction of sin in a human life if it never ends and it always just grows? And, and, and that's that idea of this disintegration of the fabric of, of human beings. So if we talk about hell, we talk about the fully grown fruit of bitterness, anger, isolation, fear, hatred. And these are things that the enemy wants to start in lives on earth. And I know that maybe you are born again, all right? Maybe you still need to cry out to God. But the principle is still true, that the enemy wants to break and disintegrate where God longs to build. And what scripture also says is one day we will be released of the sin of our life. But that is not a way for us to say, well, that's not a ticket for us to say, let me not grow. In fact, the grace of God enables us to start growing now in those in every area of our lives and to start with the building that will forever continue. And what the Christian must do is go to those areas where the fire burns to this instant to disintegrate put the hand in get the stones from without the fire and say Lord relationships have been an area of my life area of destruction disintegration I don't like to talk about it but I'm going there now because you are building me rejected by men but chosen and precious in the sight of God hurt by men Hurt by women, hurt by family, chosen by God to be restored. My heart for you is to put your hand into the flames and start building, partnering with God, opening up your heart because you are a living stone. But you will not be built without obstructions. You will not be built without putting your hand in the heat. You will not be built without rejection. So what is the plan of the enemy in your life when it comes to you that's got a desire to be more like Jesus, to build into your life and to, to say, Holy Spirit, come build me like a living stone, bring life into me. And here's the key, form me into the image of my Savior. Here's the thing, here's a plan of the enemy with the destructive fire that he wants to set a flame in you with the growing of sin is he wants to burn away, he wants to disintegrate the image of God that God wants to display through you, in your character, through your personality, in your ability to love and be loved. He wants to disintegrate the heart and the character of Christ and he wants it to fall down like a log that burns away. But through the grace of the Spirit, God builds in us. I, I want to just read for us Isaiah 61 verse 3. It says that God wants to comfort us and then it says to grant to those who mourn in Zion to give them beautiful hedges instead of ashes. 
um, some translations would say, who gives them beauty instead of ashes. And so God wants to deal with the ashes. He wants to do something with it. He does not want to ignore it. And He wants to rebuild the ruins in your life. Now, maybe you've been, there's been a part of your life where there was this sudden fire, it's like an addiction, or there was an adultery that happened close to you, and it's like everything came down like a, almost like a building that exploded. And it hurt you deeply. And I want to tell you that God can rebuild from ashes beautiful walls, beautiful buildings. But even more dangerous, if, if you've never experienced uh, a sudden fires in your life, be very aware because the Pharisees never experienced those. Because from the outside, they were perfect. But the very slow and subtle pride was like a burning from the inside that on one day would collapse. And so what it means for us is let, our, let, let, let us search our hearts in worship and say, Lord, every area of my life, whether there was a fast fire or a slow burning disintegration, I'll put my hand in there and I want to build with you. I want to build with you. Build me, Lord. The reason it's so hard and it's burning is because it's got to do with honesty. It's got to do with acknowledging mistakes. It's got to do with repenting, turning away, stopping, inviting, sharing. And those are things that's hard. And so my question is, how do you build with hot stones? You go to Jesus, who though rejected by man, was chosen and precious in the sight of God. You go to him, you follow his example. And then you take courage because what the enemy tells you, you should be ashamed of to, to handle. And, and, and now you think, I cannot talk about this because the sin is so bad. Yes, it's got one part right. That sin was bad and it hurt you. But before God, you can now go and show your ashes because Jesus was bruised and beaten so that you can come with your bruised and beaten areas and say, Lord, here I am, build with me. So let there be great hope for you if areas of your life can crashing down or if it's slowly just cooking in the wrong way. Put your hand in there. Put your hand in the hot oven. Get those stones and say, Lord, with you, I'm going to rebuild these walls. Lord, I want to thank you for everyone on this call. I want to thank you for everyone that's listening to this link. Lord, I pray that you'll give us courage to go to the stones that's hot to the areas that's burning or that used to burn maybe some of us it's like there's an area of our spiritual homes that we've closed down we don't go there we've put a red tape over that but you want to go in there there where the ashes are it's where we can go with you where you will start to rebuild again in our lives areas of loss by saying lord forgive me but here it is Build in me a great hope. Amen. God bless you.
so